Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update. Some of you probably noticed I hadn't posted anything in a while, and that was due to a few things, but mainly because I had to RMA my Ryzen 7 1800X processor. For those of you who use Linux, and regularly keep up with updates, news, rumors in the computer hardware space, then you've probably heard of the infamous GCC segfault bug, which affects many of the Ryzen desktop processors. I'll leave relevant links down in the video description if you want to read up on it in detail, but basically what will happen is that the compiler would crash with a segmentation fault for no reason. Now this bug mostly affected users using some form of a Linux distro. There wasn't any sort of hard evidence to support if this bug affected Windows users, but I've seen quite a few people report odd behavior with Windows prior to RMAing their CPUs in Windows 10, such as programs crashing, freezing, and system shutdowns while under heavy CPU loads. Then once they'd received their replacement CPUs, those issues wouldn't really occur anymore. Most of the Ryzen CPUs which have a high possibility of being affected by this bug were manufactured before week 25. Not implying that every single CPU before then is affected, so don't freak out if your CPU has a manufacturing date prior to week 25. It may very well be working just fine. The manufacturing date of your CPU can be found on the IHS. My original 1800X was manufactured in week 7, so I guess you could say it was one of the very early chips. AMD did state though that the week 25 CPUs and later shouldn't have this issue anymore and that the Ryzen 2000 series processor should have it completely mitigated. AMD instructed many of the affected users to do as much testing and tweaking as possible before RMAing, such as updating to a near BIOS with the updated Agiza microcodes, and also to test with no overclock supply to ensure that it wasn't due to system instability. Despite doing that, if it was still resulting with seg faults, then an RMA was highly recommended. Now with my 1800X, I did notice random segmentation faults, and there is a script which you can download and run in Linux called Kill Ryzen to check for these segmentation faults. It only took my 1800X about 412 seconds to fail. As for Windows 10, there, things were stable for the most part, but I did notice rare crashes and programs freezing when utilizing the CPU with a heavy load. And I actually found this to be very odd because I use multiple stress testing programs like Prime95, RealBench, Memtest86, HCI Memtest, and test for hours to ensure system stability so I don't run into any crashes in the future. Despite doing that, and knowing that my overclocks were good, I'd experience these random hiccups. It would happen randomly with various applications like Handbrake, Vegas Pro 15, file compression software, and it would even happen using very basic software like PowerPoint. But this is completely anecdotal in that regard, and like I said earlier, more testing needs to be done to confirm whether this bug can affect Windows, so just take that with a grain of salt. Right, so moving on, it was time to RMA, so I'll run down the timeline for you guys. I filled out AMD's warranty request form on April 11th and received an approval email the following day with instructions on where to send the CPU, how to package it, and what sort of documents I need to include. I was instructed to send it to their solution center down in Miami, Florida. I was a bit disappointed because I was hoping by now AMD would have opened up a solution center here in the greater Toronto area so that the RMA process wouldn't take so long. After all, they do have a business operations center here in Markham, Ontario, but I digress. After 8 days on April 20th, I took my CPU out of my PC, packaged it up very carefully in its original retail box, then I put it in another box that was much larger, wrapped it up in bubble wrap and paper stuffing just to ensure that it could withstand any potential harm or impact during shipping, because the processor will be inspected visually, and if there's any sort of damage or bent pins, they'll deny the RMA. Next, I dropped it off at my nearest shipping carrier, which in this case was UPS. Now UPS told me they can get it there the very next morning, but that was going to cost me around $230 which I thought was pretty damn expensive. So I told them to give me something more reasonable to get it there within a week. So they said they'd be able to get it there the morning of April 26th for a little over $30. This is another thing I just didn't like about the RMA process. I, it would have been really convenient for them to just give out prepaid shipping labels. After dropping off the CPU, I got in touch with one of their support representatives and inquired if they'd be able to send an advance replacement, since I would be out of the system for a few weeks. Unfortunately though, I was informed that their advance replacement program had been revoked, and I'd have to wait until they get my processor before they ship out a replacement. 
Now UPS broke their promise and ended up delivering my CPU one day late on the morning of the 27th, which was a Friday. So I wasn't expecting to hear a response back within the day since it was a weekend after all. On Monday, April 30th, I received an email stating that my 1800X had passed their inspections and they confirmed it to be defective. The same day they had shipped out my replacement processor via FedEx. It arrived at my house in two days after on May 2nd. And what I had observed was that they had sent me a weak 37 CPU. So the replacement 1800X was manufactured much after my original 1800X. Now I tested to see if the CPU was affected by the seg fault bug and for my testing, it didn't crash or result in any random seg faults. So I was happy to find out I'd be able to use Linux without any interruptions. The next thing that I did was take a crack at overclocking. I had presumed to get better results than my previous 1800X since this was manufactured much later, probably when their manufacturing process was much more mature as well. And if you've been following my channel for a while now, um, you probably know that I completely lost the silicon lottery on that last chip, as I needed 1.45 volts to get my 1800X stable at 4 GHz. This weak 37 1800X is a lot better when it comes to overclocking. 4 GHz on this chip was achievable with just 1.34 volts. 4.1 GHz is achievable at 1.42 volts, and I could actually even run some benchmarks at 4.125 GHz at 1.45 volts, but it wasn't 100% stable. So for my 24-7 use case, I've set settled with 4.05 GHz at 1.38 volts. Man, that was a lot of 4s. I didn't notice any improvements with memory overclocking though, as I'm still using my DDR4 RAM overclocked to 3333 MHz, but I did get the timings a lot more tighter than stock, which is still pretty good. But I wasn't able to push 3466 MHz with tight timings, but I honestly think this is more of a BIOS issue on this motherboard due to the inability to tweak some settings that aren't accessible for some reason. Uh, those settings are essential for those 3466 MHz uh, overclocks with tight timings and for some reason Gigabyte decided not to include them, so thank you Gigabyte. But it is what it is and I'm pretty happy with this configuration. So overall, regarding the whole RMA process, I'll say that it went well. The whole process could have gone quicker if I decided to ship out my processor sooner and use a faster shipping method. And if you take into account how many days it took since dropping off the CPU at UPS and receiving the replacement, it was about 6 days excluding weekends because those are obviously not business days. Not too bad. I've definitely had worse than that. I just hope that in the future AMD could open a distribution center here in the greater Toronto area as many other manufacturers like ASUS, MSI, Sapphire have them here. It's just a matter of driving some distance and dropping off the hardware. No, t no need to pay any absurd shipping fees or relying on a carrier who could potentially even lose or damage your package. I've heard many horror stories. I also would have really liked if they had still had their um, advanced replacement program in operation. This would have sped up the whole entire process and I wouldn't have been out of a computer for like two weeks. In the end, I'm back with a proper functioning CPU which is also able to achieve a better overclock, so that's a plus. Well guys, if you found this video to be entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the links if you want to support my channel. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.